Hello, I'm Rick McClure, and I'm so sorry that you haven't been able to come to the Capitol this year during the leadership training. It's a wonderful experience. I, I've been here a little over a month now and, and still learning my way around as there's so much to explore and so much to see. But with COVID, all the restrictions apply here at the Capitol. Actually, I'm not at the Capitol right now. I'm at home. Um, as they're due right where you're at. So we have our temperature taken at daily, the mask, we have a wristband that's assigned to us. And so that has limited the number of the people that come in and you have to actually be uh, on the guest list or signed up to speak or, or give testimony in behalf or against a particular piece of legislation that's coming through or meeting with someone. So the crowd numbers have really, really been reduced. So in a good way for me, I'm getting to tiptoe into the process just a little bit. But I know if we were at the Capitol, you would want to tour the building. And hopefully later on in the year, we will be able to do that at some point in time because it is a beautiful piece of architectural work, the workmanship, the craftsmanship. If you look at all the detail, wonder how did they do that with the tools they had when they built the building? Then the entire legislative process is rather fascinating. Uh, most of us have taken a civics class or government class at some point in time, and all of a sudden you get to see all of it working in motion and all the little details. And very quickly, you learn that little part where the bill was an idea, and then it became, goes to a committee. Well, what they don't tell you is that's where the real, real work happens the research behind it, the presentations, people speaking for it, people speaking against it, amendments back and forth, and then it gets to move on out to the house. Now, the other thing that I had heard that I really underestimated was the enormous amount of pieces of legislation that come through. Now, there are some things that come through that I didn't think would actually come through a government uh, entity like they do. For example, in the renaming of College of the Washingtons to Arkansas State University, we had to go back and have a piece of legislation that goes back and corrects all the name and all the documents within the state agencies to change it to Arkansas State University Three Rivers. And so a lot of people don't think about this. So there's a lot of small things like that. Then there's the huge things that get a lot of debate. Uh, so far, the big debates this far have been over issues concerning education. Uh, hate crime laws, uh, stand your ground, those type of things. But in the middle of all of that, the enormity of it, um, I was told when I came in that we would probably review 2,000 pieces of legislation. Now, a legislation can be just simply one paragraph, but then it can be many, many pages. So you can just multiply that up. Now, that doesn't count all the drafts that you're looking at before that. So right now, just to give you an idea where we are, this I'm recording this uh, February 13th. And so right now, we have already reviewed over 850 pieces of legislation that have been filed or in committees or have been voted on. Uh, I anticipate that in the next few weeks, we're gonna actually, on the House floor, we'll actually be voting in on at least 100 pieces of legislation a week, minimum. Minimum. We've already had some days that we're going over 30. I'm often asking, well, I bet you got easy hours. Well, it is a part-time job. And yes, when the session is in, it's kind of like a cram session, if you will. Um, my normal week is, for the last several weeks, has been like this. I get there at about 9 o'clock on Monday. I'll get through at about 8.30 Monday night. Starts Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Uh, some of that's assigned, some of that's by choice. And then I'll finish around 8.30 that night. Now, right now they're letting us off on Friday, which makes the days a little longer, but that's a COVID type of thing. So other people come to you and say, well, I'm so glad that you're willing to serve. Well, as an armchair quarterback to politicians in the past, I have always said, well, they need to do this or they should do this. And I agreed, you know, I, I, I would jump in and I'd, be critical too. When you get there, you understand what the serve is. 
because there are people who are very supportive. There are people who are very encouraging. Uh, but the majority are extremely, extremely critical. Uh, right now, I process between 200 to 350 emails a day, mostly 250 to 300. And uh, so you have to go through those. Who lives in Hot Spring or Garden County? That's the people that I'm serving. I have to go through all of those emails, sort all through, through those, then you know, sort them into groups and topics. And, and that takes a lot of time, a lot of reading. And then those that are from out of state trying to influence our state government, uh, national organizations uh, that are good, some not so good, uh, all types of different things. And then those that are having statewide campaigns. So one of the things that I've caught myself over the years in is this. <clears throat> I heard that they, being government officials, are passing something, and you fill in the blank. I heard that they, or that they did, well, who's they? Uh, I Occasionally I get a call going, well, I'm against this, or I'm against this. I don't know what, I'm ta what you're talking about. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. And so when you run into those situations, let me encourage you to do something. Research it. Research it. Let me give you a website, and I'm sure that they'll be able to give you this website a little bit later if you miss it. It's called ARKLEG, A-R-K-L-E-G dot state dot U-S. That lists all the legislators and everything that you, you can go in there, find my name, click on it, see everything that I've sponsored or been a co-sponsor on, or the same for any other legislator. You can look up the bills by numbers. There's an advanced uh, area where you can do it by subject matter, but there's so much you'll just you'll get. So you try to find out what is the Senate bill number, what is the House bill number. Uh, if you don't know that, was it uh, Rick McClure who did it? Representative Bragg did it? Is it Senator Clark that did it? Uh, if, if you can find those things, then we can begin to work and 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 find out what it is that might be need to be corrected. The other thing is kind of a misnomer. Everybody thinks you're sitting in a big fancy office. And yes, there are some beautiful offices, but not for the freshman us rookies. No. We've got a little cubicle. A little cubicle. And I'm very happy to have a cubicle place I can drop my backpack and get my laptop, my laptops, plural, out, personal, and the state laptop out, and begin to work and take care of things. The workspace that you're usually eating, or usually in, in the house floor is about 34 inches, about 34 inches, that's all it is. And there's packs of glass on both sides and in front of you now. And it's not too bad, but after a couple of hours, if you have any tendencies for claustrophobia, you ought to come out of there. So it, the working conditions, yes, it is beautiful, but they are extremely tight during the legislative session. Now, anytime that you need to get a hold of me, my email address is rick.mcclure at arkansashouse.org. rick.mcclure at arkansashouse.org. Now, just to give you, there, there's been pieces, as I mentioned, there's all types of subject that has come through. There's been a lot of things that, that you probably have seen in the news that have been highly debatable. And and uh, I serve on two committees, uh, or actually I'm on four, but two are operating every single week. The other two meet like once a month. The two primary committees I am on is uh, revenue and tax, having to do with the idea, can we eliminate state income tax? And then if we do eliminate state income tax, where is that other money going to come from? That's a good question. It just, it does just evaporate and everybody keeps getting all their resources. Um, the other part of that is uh, uh, we as a state have had little things on the books over the years that uh, are out of date or maybe unfair to an industry, but yet it's providing a resource into a very valuable area of, of the government that's helping people. So we have to balance all of those type of things out. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult at times. The other one is aging children, youth, and military. Um, it's exactly what it says, aging children, youth, and military, and it's also a catch-all. So we have been able to do some wonderful things for teachers that are teaching uh, people that are in the reserves, the National Guard, our, our kiddos, the students, 
or military affairs and those type of things. We, that's been great. Uh, some very touching, uh, sensitive issues, uh, dealing with the DHS and children. Uh, and we've got some custody laws that are going to be presented here soon. So those are type of things that are, it's all very, very, very serious. But then you also get this wide array of everything from setting the election dates to, uh, uh, there's one that's going to come up in the next week or two. And ladies, let me just tell you right now, I'm going to vote for this. Okay. Uh, it's uh, eliminating the sales tax on feminine hygiene products. Um, I began to get calls and emails and, and I'm like, what, what on earth is going on? Uh, but there is actually a bill that's coming through that will eliminate the sales tax on feminine hygiene products to give a little bit of a break in price there. And yes, ladies, I'm going to vote for that. And, and what I'm dealing with the ladies, uh, I, I'll show my ignorance. I didn't know that we had uh, community breast milk banks that were popping up around the state. And, and uh, all the guidelines were, needs to go into that, the funding that needs to go for that, all the way to the extremes of, of all types of different things that would affect our, 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 our paychecks, or uh, retirement, retirement for teachers, retirement for uh, uh, state workers, uh, retirement for anybody that's ever, the, the people that work in the park. It's, it's amazing. And there's a lot of interaction between the Municipal League, which is your city government group, and your Arkansas Association of Counties, which is our county judges. So it's very fascinating. And I do look forward to the time that you can come up and be a part, walk through, see the actual process. But anytime that you need me, feel free to just drop me an email. Uh, give me a little time. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of emails and, and some of them I need to review and some of them I just can go through pretty quickly. But I would love the opportunity to visit with you. I hope that you, uh, during this hard time of COVID, I hope you and your family are well. And I hope, I hope that what you learn in this leadership uh, development, this leadership forum, this class, this learning period will help you begin to achieve your dreams and also help you to fit into our community. So when we have people out there that are saying things that are wrong or negative, you can understand the process a little bit better and help them get back on the guideline. So if something needs to be corrected, we can get it corrected. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless.